So in this video lesson, I would like to talk to you about the merge tool. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the merge tool and how it compares and contrasts with the union tool. We want to understand the differences there. It's very important to understand the difference between those two tools, uh, especially because I think the merge tool has the worst visual depiction, the worst, the worst diagram in the Esri ArcGIS uh, help documentation. Haven't looked it up in a bunch of other software uh, help documentation, but at least as far as the Esri files go, if you're using the ArcGIS software platform, I think that it has a very confusing visual depiction. And so I want to make sure that we are clear on exactly what the merge tool does and then how it contrasts uh, with Union. Okay, so the merge tool at its core is going to combine multiple input data sets of the same geometry type into a single output data set. And so that's very important right there to know. You can only merge files that are of the same geometry type. So the merge tool is going to take multiple files, multiple input files of the same geometry type and then combine them together to form one output file. But they do all have to be the same geometry. And you might think that makes sense anyway. We talked about how a vector data file can only store uh, the uh, one type of geometry. So there's going to be no valid merge uh, output between a point file and a line file. I can't merge points and lines because there's no valid output for that. Uh, what geometry would it be? So you always have to merge things of the same geometry. Uh, but basically, it just basically takes all of those files that you input, as long as they're the same geometry type, and sticks them into the output file. So the classic example that seems to be used of a merge operation is to say that, hey, maybe I've got one data file, maybe it's a shape file, that's got all of the states in the United States from the West, all of the Western United States. And then I've got another file that has all of the United States, uh, the states in the United States in the East. And let's say that I've got these two files, but I'd much rather just have one data file of the entire United States. How would I do that? Easy merge operation. Merge these two together and you get uh, the entire United States written out to one output file. Uh, but here is where, in exactly this example, here is where I think the visual depiction of this, the diagram in the Esri's online help is, is a bit uh, misleading. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the uh, image that they give uh, for this because it is an example of the eastern United States and the western United States. So here it is. It seems to imply to me, at least in this diagram when I saw it, that these data sets have changed geographic position, that they've kind of moved together in some way. They were, they were different in different positions and then they moved together. Uh, but that is not the case. The merge tool does not work like that. The merge tool does not change the geographic position of any of the data sets that are input into the merge tool. Uh, in fact, it's quite the contrary. The geographic positions of the input files, the features in the input files, are going to remain exactly as they are in the output data file. So if I do have, for instance, uh, the data files of the eastern United States and the western United States, and they are out of their correct geographic position, if they don't actually line up the, as they should, but, uh, you know, are... are skewed in some way, I can't use the merge tool to fix that. I can use the merge tool to stick those two into the same data file, uh, but they are not going to move as the result of the merge operation. Instead, they're going to remain in their uh, exact same incorrect uh, position. So you never have to, uh, it's never going to move it for you. But on the contrary, you never have to worry about your features that go into a merge operation being in the a correct position and then being in an incorrect position as the result of a merge. It doesn't work like that. But if you think about it, this really can't be otherwise. Think about what the computer is doing here. It, the computer wouldn't know that we are dealing with the eastern and western states of the United States. The computer doesn't know what their correct geographic positions are. Uh, all it knows is what the geographic positions are of the features in the data sets, and that's just directly copied over to the output when you run the merge. So if you're looking at the online help for at least the uh, Esri software and you see a depiction like this, 
Uh, just remember that the merge operation does not change the geographic position of your uh, features that as it runs through the operation, it does not do that. Now, like I said, it's, it's critically important to understand the difference between the union operation and the merge operation, because sometimes I find that students, well, often get confused about when should they execute a union or when should they execute a merge. And some of you may be thinking that if you execute a union and you execute a merge in certain circumstances, the output of the geometry may look identical. It may be the same. And in some cases, you might be right. Uh, let's just take a look at this quick example right here, that if I've got this uh, data file with this geometry in it, and I've got another data file with this geometry in it, notice they don't overlap. If I were to execute a union on these two data sets, I would get one data set uh, returned with these two features in it. If I were to execute a merge on these two data sets, I would get the exact same result with the geometry here. So since I have uh, features that do not overlap in the data files, the result is going to be the same output, whether I'm using union or merge. But this is not something that I can generalize over all cases. This is kind of a special case with the geometry here. So let's take a look at uh, 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 special, or not special cases, but other possible cases where we get very different results. So let's return to this example where we've got these two polygon data files here uh, that we looked at when we were looking at the union. And so we've got these two different rectangles here and they're both in different data files. And there is an area where these two things overlap, right? One rectangle is overlapping the other. So if I were to run a merge on this. If I were to merge these two files, then this is what the output would be, okay? And critically, I have two rectangles in the output data file, and they overlap, okay? I have an overlap in the same data file, okay? So having data overlap in a single vector data file is not a problem as far as the technical requirements of the data set of the data file uh, goes. Uh, it's perfectly happy, like a shape file, for instance. It's perfectly happy if you have overlapping geometry within the same shape file. We frequently have overlapping geometry across data sets, of course. But even in a single shape file, for instance, it is possible to have overlapping geometry. Uh, so as a technical matter that's allowed, but the much broader point is for the purposes of your analysis, for the purposes of what you're uh, doing, does it, do you want there to be an overlap within a single data file? Does it even make sense for there to be an overlap of the single data file for the purposes uh, that you're working with your, your data? So very often what I see is that students uh, are not thinking about or anticipating there being an overlap, possible overlap in their data, and then they execute one or another geoprocessing operation and it deals with the overlap in a different way and perhaps in a way that they are not anticipating and then that has ramifications as they go forward with their analysis. So, I mean, obviously I'm working with some very simplified examples here. When we look at these rectangles, we can say, okay, yes, there's an overlap between these two rectangles. How do we want the computer to deal with the overlap? And then do we want to run a merge or a union depending on what our answer is? But remember that although this is very simplified geometry, you can certainly very easily be working with GIS data sets that have many, many, many different features in them, and it may not be at all possible on casual visual inspection to determine whether or not you have an overlap between you know, any possible features in one data set and another. Uh, and so you have to think about that in advance when you're planning out your methodology. If there is an overlap between the features in this data set and the features in this data set, how do I want the computer to go about handling that? Do I want the overlap to be preserved in the output data set? If yes, okay, then merge. If no, cut it apart so I have uh, separate features for the overlap. Okay, union. See, that's the difference. Uh, I, I, we counted features when we were working with the union operation. And that's, I want to return to that here because you can see when you count the features what the difference is. So take a look at uh, this merge operation here. One uh, 
feature in one data file, one feature in another data file, I'm going to merge them together, two input features in two different files. How many features do I have in the output data set? Well, I've got two. Okay, the number of features that are going to be present in the output of a merge operation will always be the sum of the features uh, in the input files. So I had two input features. I've got two output features. They're just in different, uh, different data files when I run the merge operation. That's uh, uh, what it provides me. And then, so if I were to open up the attribute table of the output data file right here, I would see two different uh, uh, rows in the attribute table because they're two different features. Remember, that's not what happened with the union operation. If I took these two rectangles and I ran a union on them, I can have, and I, I frequently will, it's perfectly possible to have more features in the output data set than I had going into the union operation. So remember when I executed the union on these two rectangles, I ended up with five features in the output. You know, one, two, three, four, five, five being that overlapping region. It cut apart all the geometry. The merge does not cut apart your geometry like that. That's a major distinction between those two. And looking at the difference here, counting up the features, understanding that, understanding how, it, how those two tools deal with the overlapping areas, that's key to understanding the difference between the union and the merge tool. Okay, so uh, I guess that's the merge tool. The merge tool at its core is going to take data sets of the same geometry type two data sets or more. We can merge uh, multiple data sets together in the same merge operation, and it's going to just stick them all together uh, as, uh, uh, as one output file. And that's what the merge tool does. Very simple, but very useful in many circumstances. So we'll go to the next geoprocessing tool in the next video.